All right, so today we're going to go through a status update of Betaflight 3.30 release and some changes in the coding that have been that have taken place since February 12th and the release of RC or release candidate number one. Okay, so if you go out to the Betaflight Jenkins site, you can see by going into the changes page that they're uh, you know hard the devs are hard at work and making things even better there's two major updates that were incorporated in one is that you no longer need to set q and r values to set your the new uh, bqr uh, c f2 filter and also that some not all but some uh, f3 targets are now supported as far as i'm aware the omnibus model uh, of flight controllers is not yet uh, supported because uh, beta flight takes up too much space and it can't fit on its ROM chip. But like the SP Racing F3, uh, that's supported and many others. So, so give it a look. Now, for these updates, you can't just install them from beta flight because if you go into beta flight and you're going into your firmware tab and you have unstable, you know, show unstable releases and you hit the drop down there, you're not going to see, uh, you're only going to see the 3.30 RC yet. But if you're on the Jenkins site, again, you can click on any one of these, so here you can see the release. I can click on the date and go into the uh, build artifacts and then directly download the hex file. So I'd hit, click on build artifacts, keep uh, going down through into objects, download the hex file, and then you'd hit load firmware local there. Once you have that installed, uh, you can go into the CLI and directly see that the changes. Now keep in mind it's going to reset everything uh, like it does whenever you firm, uh, flash to a new firmware release. So if I do get gyro, now you'll see there's this new variable that is gyro stage 2 low pass. That is the variable you would set for where you want to put your uh, BQRCF2 filter and the cutoff frequency for it. So as as previous, you have the low pat the the classic or the um, legacy. I want to call it legacy. Let's call it classic low pass filter. The PT1 originally started as biquab, now it's PT1. That's set at 90 hertz as a default. Uh, this is set at zero. So by default, the BQRCF2 filter is not enabled. But if you do want to enable it, again, you would set that. Uh, same applies for how you set that. You know, you would run a, a trace in your black box log. And if, um, if this is the first video you're seeing on uh, 3.3 from me, I'll link to the video in the upper right where we first go through all the details of this uh, new filtering and the new release. So you can get some of that information. But at the end of the day, you're going to uh, set your debug mode to gyro, go do a flight, with it disabled, you know, with the defaults. And then once you have that, you're going to run a, um, a pre-notch uh, spectrograph of it and then look at the noise level. Uh, the cutoff, generally, uh, the recommendation is to set it at your max motor noise. So you'd, you'd look at your roll, pitch, and yaw are going to have different max motor noise values. They're all going to be generally around the same. So you'd set that stage two, this one, to be right where your peak motor noise is. Um, me personally, I set it a little bit in advance of it. I would set it, you know, back here if it's at, you know, 286, I might go 280, 275, but that's, you know, that's just me. If you set it right over top of the cutoff frequency, essentially you're attenuating half the noise, half the peak noise uh, by setting your BQRC F2 filter uh, right over top of it. There's been a couple uh, tables plotted since as well. So in the last video, we, we showed this table over here, the Bode diagram, and how the new filter, uh, which this was the fast Coleman filter, and the BQRC mathematically is, is equivalent, maps right on top of the PT1 filter. So it's essentially the same. Uh, but now, you know, if you have the PT1 filter enabled by default, and then you enable the BQRC, uh, F2 filter as well. Now you have two low pass filters in series, which we've never had before on the gyro. So this is that's something new. And for uh, 4K and 8K 
pit gyro loop and pit loop frequencies, you know, your noise is always within this zero to a thousand hertz level. However, when you're running 16 and 32K, your noise can be in higher spectrums. And that's where these new plots, if I back out here, you can see that the new filters attenuate more, you know, higher frequency noise. And now there's latency associated with it as well. The, the more of a phase shift has more latency. But you can see this is a mapped in here where generally 100 hertz is. This is 1,000. And you can see between, you know, essentially where the 100 hertz up to 1,000, it's the same amount of attenuation. Over 100 hertz, it does to start to depart. There's a little bit of a gap here, and that's why you can see this starting to depart in phase shift and latency between the PT1 and the, and the BQRC. However, you know anything above 100 hertz, we really don't, as far as I'm aware, we don't care about that being um, delayed and, and phase shift and things of that nature. So it, we just want to really want to crush it and get rid of that noise. So the BQRC does start to do a better job of that. You know, anywhere from, I, you know, I would say theoretically 500 hertz, but it seems like a noticeable change at 1,000 and above. So that's where this, uh, from what I understand, would come in and work better for quads that are running 16 and 32-bit gyro loop frequencies. There's a little bit of confusion with black box log viewer, too, on which one you need to run to look at this data. You really need to be running the version 3.0.0 RC black box version. And if you don't have that, you would go out to the, the GitHub site. The repository you're looking for is the Betaflight Betaflight Log Viewer. What you would need to do is just right click over here and hit download zip file because this, this code has been updated, but it, a new release has not been published. You can see the last update was two days ago. It's kind of slowed down over the last month, but the last official quote quote release uh, was by Boris and it was uh, sometime in um, August 2017 so that's that's an old uh, release the the source code has been updated since so you would download this you would unzip it to a directory on your computer you can see I have a directory called drop local RC configurators and then I you know I just you just drag the zip you know the contents of the zip folder into here to unzip it. I usually put BF in front of it and then the date I downloaded it. And then uh, from there you're going to go into Chrome and you're going to add that as an, as an extension. So you're going to go to Chrome extensions uh, and then click this developer mode, click update or load unpacked extension, browse out, grab the directory, the full directory that you and put in there and then boom, there you got it. Uh, you launch from there at this point and then again you can uh, look at your spectrum watch that other video uh, for some tips on you know cutting off the front and the end of it like for example here on this uh, on this trace see all this noise uh, you know at the very end of the flight so let me click here click O and then O again turn this off so you can see that so this trace you know when he was going to land he touched the ground a little bit so you want to clip that off so you you know, clip on here and hit O to, to clip that off for your spectrum analysis. And then that tells you where you can tend, uh, set that noise level. So, go, you know, going back with this example, I'm going to run my uh, pre-notch. I would run it on all the different ones, but just to save some time here. I'm going to set this at 280 just to round it off nice. I'm going to come into here. I don't have to worry about any of that. This thing, you know, we can get rid of, no more looking at these graphs and, and you know, but we don't need this anymore. Exit out. It's perfect. It's nice. Um, we can just come into here at this point, type in set gyro underscore stage two underscore, oops, underscore low pass underscore hertz equals 280. Hit enter, hit save, and we're off to the races. So if you're going to do some testing of the 3.3 and you are kind enough and can take some black box logs. That's really what the devs are looking for at this point. To get everybody on the same page, uh, it makes sense to me at least to, to upload those black box logs to the RC Groups forum for Betaflight Flight Controller discussion thread. I'll link to this thread down below if you don't have it already. And to get to the latest, you go to the last page. You can see it's been used in many years now. And there's tons of pages. but. Uh, what you would really want to do is flash over to 3.3 and before turning on the BQRC 
uh, F2 filter. Get it. Get your quad set up to how you had the filtering for optimized, presumably for the uh, 3.2. So turn your dynamic notch on, so on and so forth. Your all the settings that you were flying in 3.2. Run a flight in black box. You know, re record a, a, a trace and a flight in black box with your debug mode notch enabled, which we talked about in the first video. And then save that. That's your baseline. Then go ahead in and turn on your BQRC filter. Get that set um, using that black box, your baseline one. And then, uh, you know, see what, you know, optimize that out for your quad. Uh, and then upload that new trace. And that's really what's useful right now to see the differential between, hey, this is, you know, before implementing the BQRC filter and this is after and then your thoughts on it. But we really need to have the data with it as well. So if you really want to compare that against the fast common filter, you can go ahead and flash over to the uh, number 521 build, which has, which is down here quite a ways, which has the fast common again enabled and the BQRC is disabled. And then do the same process. And that's really the comparison between the two. And you know, Everybody's welcoming thoughts and opinions with data on the experience between the two. So I wanted to add to this that as of 11 o'clock this morning, RS2K published some data on his, I guess he has a test program that he's running this, that can run some code through. And he's getting a very different output between the fast common filter and the BQRC filter, which is the BRC here. So again, uh, your assistance in you know, recording some traces with build 521 and then recording some traces trying to keep almost everything the same except for just using a different filter type uh, and having all the same cutoffs and all the same PIDs and you know having your baseline which without having the Coleman uh, the Coleman or the uh, BQRC filter uh, is greatly appreciated and you can push those up to the uh, RC group site uh, that would be great and just to confirm with everybody, you know, this new filtering, either the Fast Coleman or the BQRC filter, which is in the, the release candidate and prior, is right here in the filtering sequence. So although it's the stage two filter, because it's higher in frequency that it's, you know, you're setting the low pass at, it's actually prior to any of the other filtering. So it goes through the BQRC filter first, then your dynamic notch, I wouldn't think you'd need static notches, so you'd turn those off. Then it would go through the uh, PT1 filter, or can you turn the PT1 filter off? Uh, that you know set that um, cut off at zero, and for especially for 4K and 8K gyro and PID loop frequencies. And then you have your downstream after the PID loop frequency, your D-term low pass filter, uh, which presumably you'd be able to set to hopefully PT1. That was a big push in you know going to 3.2 with the addition of the dynamic filter, and then hopefully again you can turn your notch filter off. Be careful before adjusting these uh, from the defaults. So you really need to keep an eye on your motor temps um, before you start turning your dynamic notch off, and especially changing your uh, bi you know your D-term low pass filter from bi quad to PT1. All right, guys. I hope this helps and. Uh, Hopefully we'll see some logs out there and uh, keep on uh, making this better.